normality. Let's see if stream is your Facebook. On. Welcome in, welcome in. You kind of get to be in the VIP room with all of us. So welcome, Charlene. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to get ready to stream this to Facebook, and I think we'll be good to go momentarily. And it, it, again, um, Andra and Summer, it is streaming from A. Margot Blair. And we are live in 5432. One. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so excited that you are here. Come on in and get settled. Today is going to be a really, really special day. We are back again for season three, episode eight of the business sense boot camp series presented by comerica bank and discover her worldwide and we are here to help you make sense of business so that you can leave your mark in this world you may or may not be aware but the vision for this boot camp was birthed from an ig post the power of social media y'all the world is changing Anyway, back in 2018, I was having a conversation and Summer, whom you'll meet in just a moment, left a comment on that very post, which turned into something beyond what we could even imagine. And while many business owners, even the seasoned serial entrepreneurs, were trying to discover ways to navigate the business world in a global pandemic, Comerica Bank and Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated joined forces to do our part for economic sustainability. You see, our goal through these business boot camps is to educate and equip entrepreneurs, small business owners, and nonprofit leaders with the strategies and the resources that you can apply to your business immediately. While we began with the vision of 12 business workshops, here we are in season three. And combined, these virtual segments have organically reached over 15,000 people. More than 7,000 virtual platform views. We welcome over 130 guests and we partnered with more than 30 incredible subject experts in various industries. For the replays, you can go ahead over to the YouTube channel and catch all of those there because we have dozens of segments live. And so here we are, season three, episode eight. And it's important that we're still here today having these workshops, hosting these workshops, having these discussions so that we all can remain proactive in increasing access to tangible knowledge that is designed to develop your professional skills as we continue to navigate this post-COVID world together. And so we are so excited that you are here to join us because we know that you can be anywhere else in this world. And I would be completely remiss if I didn't welcome the woman behind, or company rather, the face of the company, um, <laughs> the, behind the yes of this vision. And so Summer Fawcett, welcome. We are so excited to have you here as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm excited to be here too, Margo. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy how long we've been doing this and going like from the Instagram post. I, I remember, and I'm not a social media person. So I remember I'm like, oh, Margo, that's a great idea. <laughs> this needs to be, you know, I have this whole thing. And, and you're right, it was birthed out of just putting what um, what you think online and, and kind of putting it out there. And um, it is this now kind of creative, um, up to date, like in the moment type of information. Mm. The information we're giving today is completely different than the information that was given in 2020. Um, things change, people change, businesses change. I, I mean, that's kind of the way of the world, especially right now. 
and we need advice. We need understanding. We need to know like, what can I do now for my business? And, and I think that is, um, fantastic that you've been able to reach so many people. We're just honored as a bank to be a part of it, um, to just be, you know, here in Arizona, but this is not just for Arizona people. This is certainly national. Um, and we, I, I'm excited to see it continue. I'm excited to see where it goes from here and how far it can actually go, especially with the, the, the price of knowledge is different than the price of education, right? So I think the knowledge that's granted here, there's, there's, no university that can touch it, no schooling that can touch it. Um, it's here present, nothing has to be approved, nothing has to be processed. It's like, this is what's happening to me now. This is what's going on with tax now. This is what's going on with banking now. So it's in the moment information that you cannot get from, you know, books, because books take a while to write. So things can be done and changed by the time a book comes out to tell you what to do with your business. So I, I do. I'm, I'm not. I'm a proponent of reading books, so don't get me get me wrong on that one. But <laughs> but the power of what you present and the power of what these um, the boot camps actually do for business owners and being able to ask those questions and get questions answered, and get resources. I think it's just um, and very very important. So thank you for allowing me to be here and thank you for being you, Margo. Mm, thank you so much. And again everything that we do couldn't be done without collaboration. And though that's not the focus of today's discussion, it's so important that we all begin to leverage our relationships with others, specifically as business owners. There is impact to be made. There's money to be made. And when we join forces to pool resources, so many more lives can be transformed. And so for those of you who are new to me, I am A. Margot Blair, your host. I am a leadership and personal development consultant. I'm the founder of Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization headquartered here in the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, feel free to come and visit because I'm on the welcome committee. You'll love it. Anyway, our vision at Discover Her is designed to bridge generational gaps between diverse groups of women. Now, pre-Rona, we would do this through in-person, personal and professional development experiences, such as conferences, trainings, seminars. And as we had to learn to navigate this post-COVID world at Discover Her, we began cultivating virtual experiences. And now that the world is opening back up, these experiences are hybrid. We decided to not do away with the virtual because our reach is now global. But then we also like to hug people. Like we were huggers over here. And so we had to go back in person too. Nonetheless, what we're focusing on here today is an opportunity to dive deeper around a subject that some people think is obsolete, but it's not. It's going to be a topic that's super juicy that you can begin to apply to your business right now. And we brought the best person to have this discussion. I have stalked her, professionally speaking. I'm not crazy, y'all. Um, but also, I have had conversations with her over the last year where we kind of just gave each other our flowers to, and then began to have some really transparent conversations about things that worked well for our own businesses, where we were able to establish a sisterhood, like a business bestie ship, if you want to call it. But today, I am so excited to welcome our guest, none other than Andra Williams. Before I have her pop herself off mute and we get this discussion started, let me tell you a little bit about Andra if you do not know her. Andra Williams is a Christian business mentor for women entrepreneurs. She is a blog strategist and a Holy Spirit-led business mentor. I don't know how this happens. I got to interrupt her bio real quick because I don't know how this happens, but every segment we are filled with the Holy Spirit. It happens every single time. So you get the business, you get the faith all in one. And I love it because we could not have set it up any other way. So 
Andra's mission is to teach other Christian entrepreneurs how to build a Holy Spirit-led business model with Jesus at the center, at the beginning and the end. She is completely obsessed with helping, helping women tap into their spiritual gift to bring forth their business and its irresistible factor. She is very gifted in helping you find ways to monetize your business. And so again, we are so excited to welcome Andra as we have this discussion on expert blogging blueprint. Andra, hey girl, hey, how are you today? I am doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here with you guys on today. It's such, it's such an honor, such a dream come true to just, you know, to be before you guys. So, so excited. Again, we're so excited to have you. And I know that there's some newbies in the room, people who have never been to the boot camp before. And so again, just the one tip that we would best recommend is that we invite you to be active participants. We're watching the chat on Facebook. We're watching the chat here in the VIP room, as we call it on Zoom. Um, and so what does it look like to be an active participant as we dive into this discussion today? Have your notepad and pen at the ready. There are going to be a lot of gems flung. Like they're just going to be thrown out, take them, write them down, put them in your stories, um, share them on IG or whatever platform you're on, LinkedIn, Facebook, and use the hashtag Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp. I know it's a long one, but it's very distinct and we can find it and begin to share those details as well. If you hear something that resonates with you, definitely say amen or give some hearts or what have you just to let it know, let us know that it is resonating with you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free again to drop those in the comments section as well. Sharing is caring my friends. So if there's someone who you know needs to be in this room, share it directly to them or go ahead and tag them in the comment section because this is live. Um, and then also you can just share it to your page because we want these messages to get out to the masses because again, it's practical, it's tangible, and it's things that you, it's strategies and tips that you can apply to your business right now. So Andra, without further ado, let's just dive in today's discussion on the expert blogging blueprint. Now, the first question that I that I have for you is what is blogging? Like what what is that and why is it important for business owners? So I was considered blogging as a way to drive traffic to your website, to build a brand credibility, to build a brand awareness to who you are. It's a way for you, as I said, just to gain ranking within an online space, not through a social media marketing strategy like many of us use. It's a way to just gain organic ranking. Um, and I believe me personally, that is such an important tool for you to use because social media, the dynamic of social media is ever changing. There's always different apps, different social um, platforms are being invented and the dynamic of how we do business is always changing. And one of the things that I love about blogging is that it stays the same, you know, building up SEO, it stays the same. It's been the same for about I don't even know how long exactly, but it's been the same for a while. And so for me, that was something that I wanted to really leverage within my business because the dynamic of social media is always changing. And I needed something that is evergreen uh, to just really just grow my business and to continue to build up credibility. It's a really good point that you just said evergreen, right? It's content that can exist for its lifespan. Yeah. And as long as you continue to be the subject expert in that space, it'll live there. But even for people like myself, who didn't necessarily move out of the personal development space, but began focusing more heavily on strategic partnerships or business development for the seasoned business owner, the seasoned subject experts, all of that still had a shelf life. Everything that I talked about, about personal development was still there. Everything that I talked about, about developing the person or the woman behind the many hats that we wear still exist because we put it out there, right? And then now coming back on scene in my industry, I can just pick up where I left off. That's yeah. what I hear you say. Yes. Yes. And that's the thing that I love about it because it is evergreen. It has a shelf life of one to 
five years. And with social media, it has a shelf life of 24 hours to four months. So this is the reason why a lot of us are constantly being burnt out from social media is because we're pushing out content at a very accelerated pace. And our content majority of time is competing with each other. It's not anything that's going to give us credibility past four months. So once you get past that 24 hour mark, now you have to create more and more and more content without really allowing people to really understand your brand because everything disappears within 24 hours as if you didn't even have a, a brand to begin with. Okay. So you just opened up something that I, pro- I believe that can be a floodgate. <laughs> so I'm calling, I'm going to call this the content creation exhaustion. Yes. Okay, let's just again, coin it, take it, run with it if you want. But content creation exhaustion, you just mentioned that, right? So um, having the evergreen content versus our, the stories, the you know, whatever, um, the stories that are only 24 hours, the reels, TikToks, even honestly, even the YouTubes that really focus on recency. Yeah. How can we use blogging to do away with the content creation exhaustion. What tips do you have for us? I will say to take some of the content. So I'll say two tips. Number one is that I would say to start off using an evergreen method and then to dissect that particular post or that particular video that you're using and to turn it into social media content. So what many of us do is that we work the opposite way. So we'll do social media content and then we'll do a blog and the blog doesn't have any sort of the proper format in order for it to rank. So I would say in order for you to get off of that content hamster wheel is to first start out with evergreen, dissect from that and then pull bullet points from out of the blog that you created. Right. We live in a world right now where everything is so 15 seconds. You have 15 seconds. So wow me. (laughs) And so um, if you just pull from that evergreen piece of content first and then chop your blog up into multiple pieces of content, you're now, you know, um, you're now being able to hit two birds with one stone. It's like now you're focusing on evergreen and then now you also have an opportunity to continue to grow your social media presence. But you first started out with evergreen and then you move into content creation. Again, that's so good. And that's that's actually a strategy that I follow too. I do my best to create some type of long form content. That's another way to look at it, everyone, is that long form content. And you can choose one or the other or both. I'm in a season of omnipresence marketing, which is a yeah. topic that we're going to discuss a little bit later. Right now, we want to lay the foundation. But the way I've approached it is a YouTube video, which is my long form content. I transcribe that YouTube turn that into a blog. I also have the YouTube video there because I definitely want my views and yeah. YouTube monetize eventually, right? Um, get the bag, y'all, get the bag. But at the same time, I then can pull from the blog some key points for a carousel. I can then pull and clip that video, what? A five minute video, 10, 15. Honestly, our videos are sometimes up to 90 minutes. I can pull from those videos and have shorter clips. Those are my reels. Those are my TikToks. Those are my YouTube shorts. I wanted to also give us an an additional example of what Andra is sharing because you can do that for your business too. What she's talking about is being able to work smarter and not harder. Yes, exactly. And that's really like what... I I always lean in with people because as I said, like the dynamic of social media is changing. And so right now, even the dynamic of where we're at right now in 2022 is changing versus where we were at in business in 2021. So again, a lot of our strategies are changing. A lot of our businesses are suffering, but one of the things that is still remaining the same is long form content. It's content that is evergreen. It's content that's allowing for your business to continue to grow in visibility and credibility even when social media is going through another shift and another pivot. And so, yes, I love that idea is to take, as I said, to take apart that content and to continue to diversify and to create that omnipresence within your business strictly from long-term content. Yes. That is so good. I'm, I'm so grateful that you broke that down for us for several reasons. Again, we're talking practical tips. Again, yeah. you can take this starting today, begin mapping out some topics. Like what are your core areas that you focus on in your industry and then start creating those YouTube videos. If if you're not comfortable on video just yet, get comfortable because that's where we are. That's the age we're in. Yeah. But then also 
leverage the blog, leverage sharing your intellectual property, your expertise in this format, because it does have a shelf life. Um, I want us to, before we get into like some myths of blogging, you mentioned um, that there's a proper blogging format. Can you, is that, is that one of your trade secrets or can you, can you share with us? Like I'm, I'm coming for all the gems, yeah. but like I respect boundaries. So let oh, me. Fine. <laughs> um, so for me, one of the things when I first started my blog, my blog was literally a diary entry. And what I noticed is that around that time, I will only get around eight viewers, eight monthly viewers. And I feel like I was five of those people because I kept going back and reading my own content. But I, I struggle with gaining visibility to my blog because of the way that it was outlined. And so as I started to really develop the skill and to understand the importance of outlining your blog, I understood the difference between just really understanding the keywords, understanding the volume <clears throat> that that particular word has within the online space and how many people have YouTube videos connected to it, how many people have podcasts connected to that particular word. And then also really understanding the different H's the different um, and how that is really going to allow for you to gain visibility um, just within just blogging. And I just, one of the things that I really love about Google is that it, it maps it out. It makes it so easy for you to create content because they have in there people also search or maybe something similar too. And it's just like never ending content ideas. And so one of the things that I do is that I go back and I'll really just make sure that my blog is formatted right with the proper ages, with the proper formatting of the volume, the keyword, understanding the, um, if a website has a higher domain authority. And so I won't try to compete with that particular website. I will try to outrank a website that doesn't have a higher domain authority. So it was like a whole bunch of little tips and tricks that I do and I give to my clients um, to allow for them to outrank a lot of social media influencers who have like 100,000 people coming to their social media page. And what I teach my clients is like, let's go the other way because I'm pretty sure they're not doing this and we're, 10 times out of like, never. We always outrank that particular website. And so one of my clients, she was like, oh my God, I can't believe I outranked this particular Christian minister. And I was like, yeah, it's because she just ignored, you know, long-term marketing and only focused her business on social media. So yeah. And I'm going to co-sign because here's the thing. When I, I was po posting some YouTube videos and I checked the ranking and I was like, oh, I'm above Sarah Jakes. I love y'all. I'm above Stephen Furtick. Cool. But it's, again, coming for those strategies. Those individuals are great in ministry, right? Yeah. But there were certain key phrases that I was able to put in there to differentiate myself. And so... It was like, I'm trying to think of a topic. Um, I, let's just talk about identity restoration, right? Um, and, and then in the, in the keywords, I think I put finding my identity in Christ. And then I started asking questions that I knew that people would have asked me, how do I embrace my Christian identity? And though I started writing out, you only have 500 um, characters, but I would find those clever ways to ask the questions in, in my keyword. I would always put my name in there because you want to rank on your own channels, right? So you yeah. want to make sure to take some of these um, things that will set you apart. So any of your content that you're coming up with, think not just here's my topic and let me do this, mm -hmm. but what are the questions around that topic? So if you're talking again about identity, well, that's a beast of its own. And you're going to be in the sea of anybody else who's talking about identity and it has nothing to do with faith. Yes. That's, that's really what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. It's going rather than trying to compete with the million subscriber or the, let's go even lower, the, even the 10 K subscriber count, right? We don't even have to be in the hundreds of thousands or the millions. It's even the people who just, they're YouTubers for real, for real. And we're just the newbies on the block. Yes. That's really what I hear you say. Yes. And then also too, 
like if your particular if your blog post isn't filled with key phrases and keywords, you can also save your images because if we were to go on Google, there's a little tab that says images, news, videos, pictures, and your pictures can also give you rank too. So if you change over your say, like instead of just uploading an image to your blog and not changing the file name, which I always tell my friends, like change your file name because that's going to give you more credibility. And also if you want people to know who is a face behind your brand they'll just put your your name in and all of these images and all this stuff come up as well and so it's so many ways for you to outrank someone and for you to like really um allow for your blog to shine even if you are a new blogger even if you're trying to really gain credibility it's so many little tiny strategies that so many of us overlook that if we were to implement these strategies within six months we can dominate a whole topic within our our industry that's good. I need to go back and check my photos because uh, I think it says like one, one, six, six, two, five. Yeah. That's yeah. no, but that's a really, these, again, it's these small things that, that we overlook. And, you know, some people even just try to go to Google university or YouTube university to find out these hacks for blogging or hacks for SEO. And it's like, some, it comes a time in your business life where you just need to hire the guru yeah. and it's going to expedite your learning curve. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm, that's the lane that I'm in. It's like, let me learn this as quickly as I can. And I'm good for dropping a um, hefty chunk of change on just getting that knowledge quick so yeah. I can move, right? Because I'm not the guru in certain industries and there are certain areas of my business. And that's a good thing yeah. because, you know, we, we can't, it's that, it's that saying, right. Being a jack of all trades and a master of none. I kill the game in strategic partnerships. I kill the game in event management. I kill the game in personal development. And I, you know, if I want to toot my own horn, I can say really, even though there's other people in the industry, it's not my industry, right? Even though there's other people there, I know in the way in which I do it, I am specifically equipped to serve the people I'm called to lead. That is the same for you, Andre. That is the same for Summer. That's the same for everyone listening. You are not in a saturated industry because your unique experiences, your resume, your way to get it done that other people don't know is what sets you apart. And just like Andre was saying, finding the nuances rather than going this way, we go this way and we get to the destination. When you leverage your professional assets, the things that set you apart and differentiate yourself in your industry, that is how you're able to stand out. Yeah. That's how you're able to set yourself apart. I love that so much. So let's go ahead and, and kind of dive a little bit deeper because I know that even though we've talked about some of these things and it's like, oh, that's good. Yeah. There's still like this hesitation or this fear around blogging. Um, though I would love to spend some time talking about like, why do you think people fear? I really want us to talk about how do we overcome the fear? Let's just assume our listeners have the fear. Yeah. Right. So how do we overcome that that resistance to start blogging or having any long form content? Yeah, I would say to really understand, like, get to the bottom reason of why you have that fear. The majority of the reason that I feel like a lot of people have the fear around blogging is because they feel as if it's a slower pace compared to creating YouTube videos or to creating podcast videos, um, podcast episodes, because they feel like, oh, no one reads blogs. So I kind of like I'm wasting my time pushing out this particular long form of content. But one of the things that I always tell people is that blogging isn't out of style, right? A lot of things flow through blogging. A lot of things is, is based around SEO. And so once we feel like this one has a hierarchy over this one, then I feel like that's when we put things on a, a pedestal and it's like, I don't want to do this. I just want to create podcasts. And so another thing too, is that I feel like we have that fear because a lot of us really struggle with creating words, like creating copy. That's another one of the fears that I see within a business world is that the copy. And so many of us are good at speaking, but when it comes to writing, then it's a different challenge. And so they try to 
brush past that because it's something that they do not want to do. But again, I always tell them, it's like, you, you're going to have to transcribe your blog, your podcast in some way, shape or form, whether this is with a caption um, or whatever, how else you want to describe it. It's like, there is going to be some words that are going to come out. And so I feel like really dealing with the root of why we have this fear is one of the things that I always tell people, like, what is your fear? What is your resistance around creating blogs? So you feel like no one wants to read it, that you do not understand how to um, create copy? Do you feel like no one will understand your delivery style? And there is so many reasons why people don't do it. But I will say to, to before you start blog, before you start building a, a YouTube channel and podcast is that you need to build consistency with creating long form content. And that is through blogging, right? Just because you have a camera and you have a microphone doesn't mean that now all of a sudden you're going to remain consistent to this. Like if you can't remain consistent to pushing out a 300 word article and then later on creating podcasts every week then how are you like it doesn't make any sense so I say hey start off small before you invest into anything and really learn different things really learn your strategy and then we deal with those fears at the root before we elevate your business and put you in front of the camera and now you're like overwhelmed with everything again that's so good and you break it down so well where I believe it's just, it's important to get to the root, yeah. right? If you're chasing after this goal, you're trying to pursue a goal, yet there are some limiting beliefs that you have. You have to dismantle them. If there's some habits that are no longer serving you in this season that you're stepping into, a lack of consistency, right? That's going to interfere with not just you achieving the level of success, which is relative, um, that you desire, but it's also going to interfere with your customer experience as well. And this is like pre-customer journey. If you're, if you say you're going to show up on a particular day and you don't, yeah. people are not going to be able to trust mm -hmm. you. Yeah. That's what I hear in what you're sharing as well. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like people, I say, build out that trust and that consistency at a free point where something where it's, not like you're spending thousands of dollars to then you're going to be consistent like if you can't even show up consistently in doing one little task of writing a 500 word blog how are you going to build up that consistency to not only to record it but to edit your podcast edit your youtube and also to promote it these are three different steps that it takes people days and weeks to complete so i tell you people is to really focus on doing it at a smaller point which is through blogging which is through seo really refining your craft really understanding what people want from you and then as you are growing naturally within your gifts then you start to figure out how you can con uh, continue to distribute your your services and your your expertise in multiple channels through blogging or through podcast through youtube or through podcasts but it all starts with consistency, dealing with the root of why you do not want to do it. Because I know a lot of people, I have someone now, she's like, I can't think of anything. Every time I sit down to write, it's like my, my mind just goes blank. But I'm like, but you just wrote a, a book. I don't, <laughs> you know, it's like, how, I, what is this? But I think it's that pressure of what if no one likes me? No, what if no one reads it? And all these different things that go inside of it that really limits us from just showing up within our business. Okay, so you shared something and we're we're all about being super transparent and vulnerable because we we're not new to this, right? I I Andre, you can share how long you've been navigating your entrepreneurial journey. Summer, you can chime in here too because I want people to understand I've been on my entrepreneurial journey for a decade. Like literally 10 years, right? So I didn't start two months ago and have this expectation that I should be killing the game. Andra, how long have you been studying your trade in business? Like talk, talk about that. Yeah, I, it's been next year would be 10 years for me. So right now, nine years. And I have been refining this process for a while. Um, really understand because I started out in 2000 and 13, probably like a little bit 2012, 2013. And I started out with the eight viewers and I was, you know, invest, I didn't have any money to invest. And so this is where blogging came out when the Lord, he told me that in 2013, 
I want for you to build a website and blogging based upon the stats, it didn't really take off until 2016. And so it was three years of me just in this empty space, trying to understand what blogging actually is and how I can really monetize it. And so, yes, it's been around a, it's been 10, almost 10 years and of me just hitting the ground running, no money. I didn't even have a laptop when I first started. I was blogging from my, from my phone. And so that was some, that was real complicated to try to, to create a whole article from your phone, building a whole website from your phone. So I had limited resources when I first started this, but it was all about just being faithful to it and continuing to really understand how I can fund my vision with my vision <laughs> and just, just with that. <laughs> Okay, Summer, I got to pull you in. Andra just co-signed it. We now have two people who've been in the game for an industry uh, for for almost oh, in our industries for a decade. Summer, okay, three of three, like, did you just start in the work that you're doing and you're like VIP level or? No, it uh, never happens that way. It, it, it doesn't. I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, I've been, I started as an entrepreneur at the age of 19, but, um, it was scary. So I backed off from it and I didn't start becoming an entrepreneur again until maybe six, seven years ago. So yeah, it was, it, it's, it's just one of those things that the time comes when, when you feel comfortable with moving forward and, um, yeah, I've been an entrepreneur for technically six, seven years. If you add the other time, then maybe eight, nine years. But I've been in finance, though, for 20 years. So when you combo your experience, that's kind of when all the fun stuff starts happening. That's that's when you see changes. But you have to get to that point to say, I have experience um, in in being able to, you know, go with the ebbs and flow of business. That's it's It's one of the hardest jobs you will ever have. It's never ending. It's a lot of time. It's so all these intricate things that you're learning right now from both Andra and Margo, it's it's just, it's imperative. Because honestly, I'm sitting back listening. Like, I hope Margo does not call me because I don't know anything that Andra is talking about right now. Like, I am seriously like, I don't, okay. Whatever she says sounds like it's right because I don't have an answer for anything they're saying. And literally, because I've been banking and banking is very like dinosaur when it comes to understanding um blogging and so, like i told you social media isn't my thing so it's it's just it, we're very archaic when it comes to certain things and technology is definitely one of them and and but being an entrepreneur depending on what you have you have to know these, like you have to know everything and if you don't know you better have some funds to pay for people who know or jump on some of these free calls so yeah i'm i'm learning and i'm transferring everything you're saying and i'm going to like as my marketing and creative team like hey <laughs> Are, are we doing this? Are we doing this? All. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, you guys, you guys are awesome. But yeah, you can't, you can't go from zero to to multimillionaire in in a year without the experience. Because, and if you do, you will lose it just as fast as you gain it. So okay. it's, it's one thing about making money; it's a whole other thing about keeping the money you made. So, yeah. Again, this is this is why we have these conversations and we're super candid, we're super transparent because you know, you just heard from Summer, right? She has this really high title that some people could seem like, oh, she, you know, this and that, but she had to use what was in her hand from the beginning. Andra, she had to start with where she was. Sis didn't have a computer with building this whole blog with like 400,000 views, y'all. Okay. Andre, I'm, I'm going to have you go there to really make it make sense. Like, you don't just like blogging. You're killing the game. And we're going to get to Pinterest. Like, I know. we're going to get there in a second. Because I'm telling you, talk to sis, hire her, and she's going to change your life. Um, One thing, I was literally on Pinterest in the very beginning. Like, checking the <laughs> I mean I'm telling you. It's I'm so, so <laughs> it's so untapped and people don't know. And so when I came to her, I was like, look, I'll be honest with you. If I need to hire you, I'll book you, but I want to be your friend. Like yeah. that's where we're at. That, that was the conversation because again, there's things that I know that I can share with another business expert and I'm not looking for them to become a client. Why? Like, here you go. And if they choose to exchange it, which they don't have to, that's where we are. And what we saw within each other was 
she's navigating some streets that I'm not navigating. I want some of that. And I'm like, yeah, so about this Pinterest thing and the, the, these, these 400K views a month that you have that I have three. Let's let's exchange just because I, I I don't I don't understand how this works. And so we again, like I said, started having conversations and it turned into so much more than just a relationship. It you know, it turned into so much more than just exchanging these resources where I was like, oh no, 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 no. If I really want to up level my game in my business, because I know ain't nobody else using. Pinterest the way I'm about to start using it. <laughs> Look, get on early. I, I said this, I'm going to be transparent here. I was still on MySpace when everybody went to Facebook. And I think when I finally came to Facebook, everybody was already on to Instagram. And I was like, y'all, I got to cat. And then I went to Instagram and I, okay, I wasn't this late, but I was barely coming to Instagram, knowing how to use the platform for my business when people were coming to TikTok. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to be late this time. Like, and get it. These platforms exist. Fundamentally, you need to know that IG, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, I'm trying to think what else. Um, there, those are social media platforms. YouTube and Pinterest, those are search engines. I'm gonna pause and give the guru an opportunity to explain to us the difference and why understanding the difference is important. Yeah. And we're gonna dive deeper into how you show up on the different platforms with the same content. So Andra. Break us, break it down for us, the difference between social media and the search engine optimization with YouTube, Google, and Pinterest. Yeah. So like how you said, there are, every social platform has its own, like its own purpose. And so with Instagram, we see that as for brand awareness, for Facebook, it's community, for, for Pinterest, it's a visual search engine. And then for Twitter, it's more for digital services going viral. So one of the things that I've noticed is that we'll use one platform for our entire business. And so we think that if we're on Instagram, that is going to build, build community, is going to build up all these different things, but that wasn't the purpose of Instagram and of Facebook and Twitter. And so when we start to switch into, into using Pinterest and also using Google, we, then we start to really step into creating long form content. And so in creating long term long form content and then distributing your long form content through Google. So, I mean, through Google and through Pinterest. And so as we start to use Pinterest, it is a way for us to capture the, the visual side of our business. So if you are a brand strategist and a lot of your, your business is really based upon creating logos, creating websites, it wouldn't make any sense for you to primarily just be on Facebook because that's not where your audience is at and that is not how people are consuming content um, for your particular business. And so really understanding the different type of platforms and how Pinterest could really help leverage your business based upon the type of industry that you are in will give you will accelerate your blog so that's one of the things that I did too is that I because it would took me about six months for me to really start to gain leverage from just using a traditional way but when I switched over to Pinterest my blog started to take off within three weeks. And so it was a very, that's how I was able to really go from eight to 10,000 to 19,000, 20,000, 150,000, just from using Pinterest and, and going through those different tabs on Pinterest and dominating not only the article side, but the visual side as well. I know I just said a lot. <laughs> no, look, I'm, I'm with you. I'm tracking. I, I, cause again, this, these are things that, that we need to learn for our businesses as well. And so my prayer is that um, everybody who's listening doesn't just listen once, that we come back and listen to the replay and run it back. And the way I listen to these boot camps over again, because again, at this point, there's 36 of them. I just put it on as if it's a podcast. <laughs> That's that's what I had to do at this point in time because there's so much there's a wealth of na a well of knowledge that we're that, that we're transferring here, right? And so if you don't know one, go back listen to it again and begin to 
ask a specific question when it comes to what you don't know or where you're concerned. So with, let's just say, um, the one of the points about the views, right? How, like understanding views uh, across social media or these search engines, rather than just saying, I don't get it. Well, that doesn't help any of us help you get it better, right? But if you say, um, I don't know how to get more views on X platform. Oh, okay, great. I can say, okay, well, what, or Andra can say, well, what strategies are you currently using? Well, I'm just posting and running. Well, there's the problem. Let's unpack that a little bit, right? Or I just take my, you know, one hour YouTube and I post my intro. Mm. Well, is your intro able to hook your audience? No, but at the 30 minute marker where you give a punchy one-liner that's about 30 seconds, that's what you pull out of that 30 minute, one hour video. And that's what you put on to the IG reel, to the TikTok, to the YouTube short as like a trailer and even Pinterest because Pinterest does videos, something that I'm learning right? And that is how you can then capture the audience to then go back to the podcast, the YouTube, the blog, and consume the rest of the meat. But you want to give them something punchy first so that they're like, mm, I want to learn this more. So again, it's rethinking how you're showing up on the platform. And so when you ask a specific question, individuals like Andra, strategies like Andra can help you with something specific as opposed to you presenting a vague question. And then we got to pull from you what the root of the challenge is that you're facing. Would you agree, Andra? Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I feel like, you know, we all, even when it comes to just strategies, we always feel like it's just I, I don't know what to push out. That's like something it's like, you know, getting to the root problem of it. And it's like, ex again, going first and asking, what are you doing? And then the whole thing about marketing and creating content is that you always want to do A and B testing. Like nothing is ever going to be perfect the first okay. time that you do it. And so really doing A and B testing, really refining what you're doing and really just, um, figuring out different wording that you can use because it may be that, you know, the wording that you are using within your videos is not really uh, relevant or it's not simple or it's not clear enough for them to understand. So we do a different A and B testing and we change up the wording because it may be the wording that you're using isn't captivating. So that's a lot of with blogging and really doing Pinterest is that a lot of times, a lot of articles, a lot of strategies do not work is because of the wording that they're using. They're not doing any testing. And then also too, they're just looking at their the metrics of their business from a social media metric, instead of looking at it from a Google analytic perspective and understanding a deeper insight of how their business is going and what wordings is trending. The last stuff. <laughs> Again, yeah. there, there is a lot there, but if we're serious, serious about running profitable businesses, yeah. underline profitable, um, we, we have to learn it. And, and, um, I won't go long in the story, but I was at a place where I didn't understand marketing. Yeah. And so I paid a few thousand dollars to a marketer and I saw no results. And I'm like, yo, I, mm, what I paid you I at least would have liked to break even yeah that didn't happen and they were shady what I learned later but what it came to was like well you didn't tell me what you needed help with you just said marketing did you need help with awareness did you need help with conversion I was like yep I'm recovering from the streets so you remember <laughs> no I'm kidding but at the same time I I had to take that one on my chin and it wasn't a great win because I didn't even know there was a dip. Like, marketing is marketing. Give me some money. That's it. Like, yeah. Take my words and what I'm saying, if it's not clear, and help me communicate it to the person I'm serving. Well, who are you serving? People who want to know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> Does, it doesn't work like that. Right. I had to get very clear on who I was talking about. Right. And we can say we serve Christian women. It's like, what part? <laughs> okay, 
okay but but what do you mean right and we have to break we have to break that down so uh, just give the the ex example that i would approach how i would approach that one example of marketing differently so one of the services that i provide is authority consulting okay well what the heck is that it's a name i just gave it there to make it make sense for me in my back end but when I communicate it to other people, I talk about thought leadership. I talk about taking your expertise, your experience, creating a signature framework that's unique to you, and then packaging that into a book, into a digital resource, and into a signature event. Somebody who's interested in that, oh, okay, tell me more, right? But then I dig deeper and I say, this is for the seasoned subject experts. If you've been in the game less than a year, I'm not talking to you. It's very clear on who I'm not talking to. But then again, when I'm doing my content, when I'm talking live, when I'm doing certain things, I will say, if you are a person who has been in your industry and you are feeling like you're losing your passion for the work that you do, they're running to sit down and listen to whatever the heck I'm going to say next, right? If I say, you know, I'm talking to the seasoned subject expert who has been in their industry for five to 10 years and is looking for an additional revenue stream. I would like some more money. Let me listen to what, so those are just two examples. And so now what I would do if I, I know marketing a little bit better now, but revisiting that same example, I would say, hey, I'm coming out with this new training and I would like more people to be aware of the training. That's the sole focus. It's just getting more eyeballs on that training. Yeah. And that's what we're going after. But if I say, hey, I want more people who attend the training to come and sign up for my signature authority consulting service, we're talking solely conversion. I don't necessarily need more eyeballs right now. I want the check written. I want the card swiped. I want the digital transfer into my bank account. Right. Right. And there's specific things that we focus on there. So though this could be like a really heavy conversation and I don't understand what Andra said or Marco, even what you said kind of threw me, number one, listen to, again, listen to this again, but also understand what is the goal? What is the outcome of what you're looking to do? This one example of the marketing is one fraction of your business. Again, the difference between getting more eyeballs or the awareness on your brand and getting conversions, people to actually swipe their card or pay through PayPal, whatever you choose, and, and, and actually enroll into a service, a product, or something it is that you're selling. Yeah. You know, these conversations that we're having are, are really rich and really loaded. And I'm pretty sure we can go on forever. I do want us to kind of pivot and talk about Pinterest. Yes. I wanted to talk about, I know that's your thing. Summer was like, I was on this right before the call. That's actually why I was late. No, I'm I'm totally kidding. Summer was here. But Let's talk about Pinterest because this is that's that's even a whole different world than blogging. Yeah. So I'm gonna let you take it. I'm gonna sit back and be quiet because, like I told you, I got three views a month. Andra doesn't. So like the floor is yours. Let me know when you want me to come back in and ask another question. Okay. <laughs> so you guys, I as she mentioned, I love Pinterest because it is a visual search engine. So if you are someone like me, someone who very who has videos or someone who's very creative and you are trying to uh, figure out another way to distribute your content using Pinterest is such an amazing tool to have. It will accelerate your business at maybe like a 90% um, a rate just using Pinterest and really understanding the platform. So one of the things that I always tell people is that when you are creating a Pinterest account is to create a business account and have your own personal account. So the reason is because as you are positioning yourself, what Pinterest does is that it places you into a category and they're saying, hey, based upon things that you have searched, based upon the content that you are scrolling through and you have looked at it for more than three seconds, that this is now the industry that we are placing you in. So now we are going to flood your whole feed with this particular thing. And so once you 
separate the two accounts and have your business account and have a personal account where you split apart your business, then you are able to gain ranking a, a lot faster because you're not confusing the search engines by you just looking up and searching anything. The same thing with Google is that if you want to gain positioning a lot faster, it's just like not to uh, have a niche, but to niche base your content so that they can position you a lot faster. Really understanding how to play up with um, just uh, the keywords, building boards around what your business is really serving. So this could be the same thing as having content pillars on, show, on social media, is having boards. And within those boards, to fill those boards up with keywords. So again, so that you can gain ranking a lot faster. So the whole point of this is that we're trying to accelerate you. We're trying to have you to collapse time and not to go the traditional route as many of us did. And it took us 10 years to get here. It's that we're trying to get you to your destination within three weeks to six months um, by teaching you how to really understand the power of keywords, key phrase, plan around with different titles, Plan around with different colors because different colors mean something as well. And if you, as again, if you have a visual based business to really just play up on this platform because it is such a um, overlooked platform. One of my clients, she just got a brand sponsorship, a five figure contract through Pinterest again, because it is such a untapped resource for a lot of African-American entrepreneurs. And so if you are trying to accelerate your business to gain visibility, and this is even also with videos, using a platform for visibility, going to Instagram for awareness, because that's how it works with marketing is visibility. Then I bend your content, then I buy from you. And so once we separate those um, three things and we kind of build out that marketing strategy using Pinterest for that visibility, that long-term ranking, using Google for that as well, looking up our Google analytics, understanding our business, understanding the seasons of business that we're in, how we can project it. I feel like I can go on and on and on about this topic, but what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is to use Pinterest as a way to gain visibility for your business and to bypass the time that it will take you if you were to just focus solely on Instagram to grow your visibility, to use that as a visibility tool to drive traffic to your website. And as you are driving traffic to your website, you drive traffic to your programs, to your shop, to your lead magnet. And then you kind of like funnel them into now they are captivated into your world and they're binging your content and you're growing in credibility all just through using the power of Pinterest. And again, you summarize that so well and you break it down really well too. And that's why I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to ask specific questions just yet. We, we, we have them, we'll get there. But I wanted you to kind of just bring us into the world of Pinterest. I wanted us to get like kind of a little bit of a fire hose experience of like, boom, what is it? Um, because I think people know that I can make a Pinterest board and I can find cute outfits and I can find inspo for my office or X, Y, Z, but we don't necessarily think about how we utilize it for our business. Mm -hmm. And that again, number one is where we leave money on the table. The one thing that I'll also share is when I didn't know how to utilize YouTube, when I didn't know how to utilize Pinterest. When I didn't know how to utilize these platforms, it, it was a detriment to me. It was a disservice of the people that we all are called to serve. Because when we don't know, we're just leaving stones unturned, right? And so that's part of the reason why I wanted to make sure that we incorporated this discussion in this series or season of the boot camp so that we can really say, okay, what are some things that, you know, we talked about sales, we've talked about marketing in season one and two, we've talked about this, we've heard from the gurus who've made the Inc. 500 list, which is big, yay. We've taught, you know, we've heard from people who are contributors for Forbes, women, and all of the things, all of that is great. And now here we are, bringing it back down to the fundamentals again, saying, at year one, what could we have done better? At year seven, what could we have done better because we were slow to the learning curve, right? People talk about failing fast. That is, the, if you don't take anything away from what we talked about today, 
definitely take that fail fast and then learn what you don't know so that you can get back up and really then begin to apply that pressure in your business to make the impact and the income that you're here to make. So, you know, as we're talking about Pinterest, what are some of the ways that we can just get started? That I think that's one of the common questions of all the registrants. They were like, how do I get started? How do I get started? How do I get started? Yeah. And so I just want to, I know that that could be a loaded question in and of itself. I know we were talking about ask specific questions, get started with what? Yeah. So I would like you to answer that question in the way it's like, what should we get started with when it comes to Pinterest? I will say to definitely make sure that your account is set up properly so that way people can find you and also at the same time to create boards as I mentioned and to fill those boards up with keywords and a lot of times since a lot of us we don't know how to use Pinterest is that we're like oh my gosh what do I create what do I put inside these boards the cool thing about Pinterest is that again they want to position you and they want for you to excel on the platform so what you'll do instead of just leaving your account empty and just having just your account vacant you will start posting other um, Pinterest users, their information within your board that you created. And the reason being is because we want to uh, leverage their thing. So what the thing is about Pinterest is that if you have a pin and your pin is brand spanking new, this is a new blog, this is a new podcast, video, and you put it in the same board as someone who's dominating it, Pinterest start to say, okay, since you're in this board with this user, this user has over, you know, 5 million views. Now I'm going to leverage your, your pin to now give you the, the overflow. So I kind of think, I always tell my clients, like, it's like that, that bumper crop, that uh, overflow blessing is like, if you can't find what you're looking for within this business, this is the next option that you can use in order to, um, if you have questions about different things, if this blog or this video didn't answer your question. And so we kind of leverage other people's accounts within Pinterest. Normally within Instagram, it's like, focus on yourself. Don't really use anyone else's because it may confuse your audience. But with Pinterest, it's like, no, I want for you to use it because I want for you to collapse that time. So to create boards, and again, these boards are your content pillars based around the, the things that you're talking about the most. So if you have a board around marketing, you fill that board up with marketing, you fill up 10 pins inside of there. And then after you start to really understand the platform, you start putting your information within that board, but you're not starting out at ground zero, right? You're starting out with that bumper crop blessing that's going to leverage your account, that's going to give you the visibility. So this is where that visibility factor comes in because it's like, okay, I want for you to rank. And so again, is it to make sure that your account is filled all right, that you have the right name. So again, if you're a business, um, business owner who specializes in helping people with their finances, it's like, I am an accountant. That's the category that I'm in. And then in your bio, you give a little bit more, you fill it up with keywords that people are actively searching. You can do this through either Google or you can do it through Pinterest and look up in the top header section. As you are typing out something, you're searching for something, Google will have like a little uh, header filled with colorful wording that you can use to now put in your bio. So again, Pinterest really wants for you to excel. Like they, once you start to really understand the little things that they throw out there, and they'll also email your pins out to people too as well. So again, if you are, so you only have five pins out and you are in a category of someone who has a very popular account, They'll email your blogs and email your videos to people. So you're growing super, super fast. And once you really leverage that and really position yourself, it's like chef's kiss. It's like, it, it's no way you can't win with this strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Just, well, there's that. Again, yeah. This is so important for you to leverage now for your business. Again, 
eventually people are going to catch on to these strategies. Yes. And then we have to continue to be innovative and figure out what we're doing next. But for now, we're going to win in the podcast streets, the YouTube streets, the Pinterest streets. Um, and I want us... I want us to break this down because one of the questions that we received around the whole, how do we get started, where they asked, um, you know, what's the best approach if you're a one woman show? And I know that's the case for a lot of people. There's a lot of solopreneurs who are listening to this episode. So how do we do all of the things that we've been talking about for the last hour if it's just me, myself, and I, like I'm my secretary, even though I gave her the name Patty, yeah. I'm Patty in truth. Like, help me out. Yeah. yeah, I when I first started, I was a solo entrepreneur, and it really comes down to your productivity schedule and time management. And so, how my productivity schedule is, since I coach and I do other things, is that I have to create certain days where it's a marketing day, it's a sales day. So I heard one of another business coach, Jerisha, uh, Jerisha Hawk, I think I'm pronouncing her name right. She talked a long time ago about creating um, theme to your days. So Monday is marketing days, Tuesday is sales days, Wednesdays is your CEO day. And so what I did is that I created a a schedule for me to stick to. So if Mondays are my marketing days and that's all that I do, I'll try to fill up my calendar with probably one extra other thing, just like being on, probably touching it with my clients. But on Mondays, all that I'm doing is just marketing. And so visibility using SEO, using Pinterest will fall in that category. So within that day, within five minutes or so, I am just you know, um, spending time looking up keywords, creating pins, and then I do things in sprints. Another thing people can do too is to like time block, give yourself around like an hour or so and just create pins, upload the pins, save it. And so it, it really was effective for me to just create days not to try to do record a video in one day, then the next, well, record the video, edit the video, and then now I'm publishing the video or the same thing with blogs, it's too much. And then you're not even going to be moving the needle within your business because you're going to be stuck doing one thing all day. So it was me focusing on one particular thing getting it done and then really just the next day focusing on sales. So it's kind of like I just give each day a theme And within that day, I do all of my marketing. I start pitching for collaborations. I'll do whatever I need to do to really grow visibility. Then the next day I'm doing nurture, where it's like nothing but just me connecting, doing network events or whatever. So that's what I would say is to create a schedule that's efficient for you and to take accountability of your life. I do not have kids. I'm not married. So my schedule is a little bit different from someone who has a full family. So how much, you know, starting asking yourself, how much time do you have per day to spend on your business? Like, you know, if you have five hours, then time block those five hours, use those five hours for your business and to create a schedule that works around your life. So, right. So it's like, we're oftentimes overwhelmed because we're trying to pick up someone else's schedule who has a totally different lifestyle, totally different workload than what we have. So how many hours do you have to um, commit to your business? How much support do you have? And then after that, create a time schedule, you know, day themes, and then place everything into where it needs to be. And I couldn't, I couldn't agree with that more. Thank you for breaking that down. And the, the, the slight nuance that I have is just another recommendation um, for those, for the, for our listeners, because when I was trying to be all things all to all people, and I was wearing that super woman on my chest and the cape and all the things, um, even though I've since burned the cape, I had to figure out exactly what Andre was saying, what works for me. Now, three years ago on my entrepreneurial journey, I was able to pick up and go wherever I wanted to, when I wanted to, and I didn't have to answer to nobody but myself, right? Things have drastically changed. I am a wife. I'm a mother of a 12-year-old. I'm a mother of a nine-year-old. I'm a mother of a two-year-old who's potty training. Okay. So there's life. In addition to the other things, I am the founder of a nonprofit who hosts monthly business boot camps every third 
th Thursday come and join us and then there's other things I do as well and just as Andra mentioned I had to figure out what worked for my schedule right and I'm I just want to to be sure to bring this light of of hearing what life looks like for someone who is married who does have kids and has several other things on her plate and so the one way I started approaching is I think I started doing this a few years ago just before just after I was married um I started breaking down my goals for the year and so I had one goal for the year and then I broke that one goal into uh milestones for each quarter. And then each quarter, I focus on a specific achievement for the month. So only one goal for the entire year, different milestones each quarter. So then that broke down to the four. And then each month, I had some other checkpoint to really be able to track Okay, am I getting closer? Am I getting closer? Am I getting closer? That's what works for me. Not worked in the past, but that's still till this day what works for me because I'm not about to get to the next year and the next year and the next year and just be completely flat out disappointed. I'm achieving one thing. And that one thing is X, but it looks different. So ultimately, you can really say by the end of the year, I'm really achieving 48 goals. But I found a strategy that works for me in my schedule. Mondays are professional development days. A lot of people got ugly attitudes, funky attitudes on Monday. It's not about to affect me. So I'm about to be just in my little bubble. And that has worked for me for six years. Six years. Mondays have been my professional development day. And it, it still works once I became married, once I had children and all of that. I have specific client days where my children are in school. I still have my toddler who yells and disrupts meetings sometimes, but that's okay. I learned and COVID gave us grace that if there's someone yelling in the background, it's a little bit okay, right? Now we do wanna be professional, but at the same time, if anybody else have, has ever had a two-year-old, they don't listen. <laughs> that's just that, right? So again, my Tuesdays are my client days. Wednesdays, I catch up on other things. I'm also a doctoral candidate. So life is real packed and busy. And so you have to figure out what works for you. Yeah. In this recent season, I had to cut several things off of my list. And your girl's plate is still full in certain people's eyes. But the crazy thing is, I'm not burnt out. I'm not stressed when I didn't even have as much as I do on my plate. Why? because I can consult with my husband. I can, I figure out how to work around schedules where my kids are not here during nap time and things like that. This is real life for us. Yeah. So as Andra said, don't look at somebody else's schedule and what they're producing and how quickly they did X, Y, Z, because they don't have a potty training toddler. Like that. It's just, it's just not their life right? Or they're not taking care of their pa their parents um, that, that you might be doing for your household, or they might not go be going through a disruptive season in their life where in, old, in reality, you just want to go away, hide and crawl under a rock. It's a trying season for some people, right? So right where you are in this season of your life, be there and use what's in your hands. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I love how you you mentioned like, as you said, like to break down your goals and to not overwhelm your schedule. A lot of us, we're looking at all these social media influencers who are like, I'm a digital nomad. I travel around the world. It's like, and they give you only a one side picture, but they're not letting you know that they have 10 people working behind them that allow for them to create that flexibility and that luxury within their schedules. And so now you're like trying to keep up with them, trying to do business like how they're doing, and they're not telling you the full picture of what's really going on. And so I serve a lot of women who are corporate, who have like 
engineering jobs and they work at very like very large corporations and they're like I'm trying to keep up with you and I'm like don't keep up with me I'm a single woman who's living my life who's just doing everything you have a you know a full corporate job kids your daughter just got married you know like don't don't take don't try to keep up with me because I, my life is so much different from yours. You know, I have different, the Lord has graced me to do different things in this season that will kind of make your head spin if you try to look at my life and try to pick up that same pressure. And so it's like, what are you graced to do and look at your own schedule, break down your goals. It's like, for me, um, it's like, is this a season to build visibility or is this a season to build sales? So I just got out of a quarter for, for the first three quarters, I was building visibility. And that's all that I did, connecting, networking. And so I was graced to do that because that's what the Lord sent me on. And so I wasn't overwhelming my schedule with different things because I just knew that the season that I was in was a different season. And I only focused on that one thing. And then as the Lord took me out of that, going into Q4, now it's a sales season for me where I'm hitting the ground running with selling different things. And then I pulled back, um, and so as, as you mentioned, like understanding where you are at in your life, God has given us different grace to do different things and to just take into consideration your responsibilities before you look at social media. This is so good and so rich. And we're kind of on the, the tail end of, of this episode, but I, I do want us to, to talk about um, SEO there was one thing that you mentioned earlier, and I'm trying to look in my notes to see if I wrote it down, but there was a part we were talking about earlier when it came to um, our industry and content creating, and it, this actually might be a really good segue into SEO, but people that you've worked with, you have said that some of them get hesitant on like, I don't know what to create and they get in like, we'll call it writer's block or content creation um, blockage. And one thing that I started doing, um, let me, let me, I'm going to back up and say it this way on IG. And I think even TikTok, there's like these trending audios or trending reels that people create. Yeah. Everybody's creating the same piece of content. So it's like, when rather than getting bogged down on like, oh, I don't know what to create, use other people's content as inspiration. Don't just copy flat out what people are doing. Like that's that's not even ethical. And you wouldn't want to work with you if you did that, right? If you're a brain surgeon, God forbid you have to get that. But if you had a brain surgeon that just copied off of their neighbor's work, you wouldn't want that person operating on your brain. Right. So, of course, the same way, if you're sitting here telling your audience that you can help them achieve specific results or you can help them achieve specific outcome. Well, we want to believe that you can actually do that. And if you're just replicating somebody else's content or just regurgitating how to build a six figure business like everybody's doing. I can't with that topic. <laughs> we're just not going to do that. Right. But if you sit here and talk about how to generate your first 1,000K with a self-published book, you're going to kill the game. Why? Because everybody's talking about how to build a six-figure business as a published author. It's not the same thing, yeah. right? Um, if you want to uh, publish your first Pinterest pot of your first Pinterest pin, Andre's going to kill the game and get a lot of signups on that freebie. Why? because they nobody know how to navigate the Pinterest streak, yeah. right? Like it's just a fact. And so how can you look at what other people are putting out there and use your creative genius to put your own spin on it? Yeah. And I, I can't pull it up right here, but I was looking at someone's IG who's killing the game. And I was like, I need something like that. And I just didn't want to come on every single day saying the same thing over and over and over again. And so I saw that they came out with this clip that's not even on their social anymore. And I was like, boom, it's on mine still. But it was like an introduction to who they were and like what their um, industry is or what their unique approach is. And then like, here's four ways you can work with me. Yeah. People, like, people now know what they can do the first stop. And on IG, you can pin it to your profile. I share that to my story every single day. 
And every single day there's like, oh my God, I didn't know you could do that. You've been looking at my stories for the last three months because I saw you. You should know yeah. what I do. And so again, people have to see what you do multiple times. People say seven times, lie. They have to see it multiple times yeah. over and over. So right now, before as we're transitioning these last 10 minutes into talk about SEO, just think about this. If you put something out there once, if you put something out there one time, put it out there right today, put it out there tomorrow, put it out there the next day and the next day and the next, take your Sabbath, but keep putting it out there yeah. and then start to track your results. Well, start to track your results as you start putting stuff out there. And here's why. As the people on your audience start to see you're consistent every day, I'm like, good morning, y'all with the same post. And people start saying good morning back. And people have now invested into some premium services that I was like, man, I don't know if these people are gonna, I don't, I don't know if these people are actually seeing, I don't know if they're really resonating. I just wasn't being consistent enough saying the same thing over. Yeah. If you want to make money every day, you better be showing up every single day. Every day. <laughs> and you can put stuff on autopilot. Let's get into SEO. What in the world? is SEO and why do we need it? So SEO is search engine optimization and it is super important for you. So we were to backtrack with how it works. A lot of people just solely focus on SEO, but in order for SEO to work, you first have to go through Google search console and that is how you will make the SEO more potent. So what Google search console is when this is where your, your site is registered. So this is where you're kind of like gaining that positioning. You want the internet streets to know who you are. And so you have Google search console. After you really, you registered your website, what Google search console would do is that now they will crawl your website to pull out information about you. And this is how you will start to become known on uh, Google is through the searching and a crawling of your website. So as you have allowed for your website to get crawled, as Google has really um, verified you as a, as a content creator or as a writer, whatever your business is, the, the industry that you're in, then this is where you will use SEO to really optimize what Google has already known about you and what they have said is what you have said is to be true about you. So this is where you'll go in with your content. This is where you go in with your videos and really to just solidify yourself in that particular industry that you told Google that you are in when they crawled your website. When it comes to like this conversation that we're having, it's like, wait a minute, Google console, what is that? Where are we going? How do I find out? What are you talking about? Crawling my website, like what yeah. is, right? So how does somebody, like if they were going to do this right now, I want us to like, if we can, if you, let's just break that down. Like how do they get into the Google console to even start this process? So you will first start out with just Googling Google search console. And then after this, it will have you to first to go through your hosting. So this is where we will start to really understanding self-hosted websites versus a web hosted website. So it will be two categories for you to choose. Now, I always tell people to use a self-hosted website because then you start to own the content and Google favors self-hosted websites over a web hosted website. So web hosted is going to be your Wix, is going to be your Squarespace is going to be your GoDaddy websites. And so the reason is because it's like now you have to bypass 10 steps in order for them to verify you because now they're going through another third party. And so we'll land on Google Search Console. Then this is where you'll figure out if you have a hosting, a self-hosting, and then a web hosting. You will go within your DNS records. This is where you have verified your domain name. This is where you have verified your uh, IP address. Like all these different things is going to bring up. And then you just take that coding that they're going to give you and, and place it within your DNS records. So this is kind of like, I'm crawling your website, but I'm crawling the name. So it's like I'm crawling AndraWilliams.com and I'm pulling out the information so that way I can rank her when she starts to push out content. Um, so after the, the Google search console, registering your name, 
then you will then they'll crawl your website the crawling your website is again just pulling out information all of the steps is going to be search console verify it and then the next step the third step is when you'll go through the crawling of the pages that you have on your website and thank you for taking a second to break that down too right because it's like okay this is a lot but it is simple simple i didn't say easy simple when you just know kind of like that first next steps and in the beginning we will we can all agree that we didn't know all of these things some of us we had to click something break it and then yes. figure out if it was even salvageable yeah. so like let's be very clear if you have no clue what Andra said in the last three minutes it is okay certain things you can google if you want to google google console it will come up and then you can take that first next step. If you don't know what a DNS, I can't tell you what a DNS stands for. I know what it is. I know how it functions because I've used it. I allow myself to work in the confines of what I can understand, okay? And I don't teach it for that very reason. However, when it comes to you taking these next steps, it is so important that you start at step one, master that before you take step two. Yeah. I wanna jump back as we're wrapping up here. Andra said the first three quarters, so majority of the year, she was focusing on visibility, establishing relationship, connecting with others, having conversations, growing her community. And now she's pushing on the gas with sales and she's closing them left and right, why? Because she was able to establish herself as an authority. I took a step back after God told me to surrender my business to him. I canceled clients. I, I had an offboarding process. I didn't just walk away. But nonetheless, I had to transition out and get grounded in the last season as well. And now I'm showing up and it's aggressive. And people are like, yo, wait, but you just said, and you were like gone for this long. How are you doing? You're here, you're here, you're here. Because when I got grounded, I made sure that I prepped. And so when I came back with this podcast that no one even knew was coming, your girl had all the week scheduled. We're good until December. Every Tuesday, I just tune into Seasons of Life, the podcast, and we're good. So everything that we talked about today, there was a prepping season before the implementation and the execution. We're going to preach to you today if we haven't preached to you already, okay? There was a season of resting and waiting. Some of us were a little bit impatient, impatient, but we still had to rest. We could not move before it was time to move or it would crash and burn. When I talk about building your business on a solid foundation, if you do not have that foundation, let's go to the word. Let's go to Matthew right? Building the house on sand, the wind came, boom, and it tumbled down, right? When you just take that step one, not looking to your left, not looking to your right, not comparing yourself to where everybody else is, not thinking, oh, I've been in the game for 10 years, so I should be further along. Nope. Nope. You're right where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And when you give yourself grace, then you're going to be able to show up as your authentic self. And you're okay with the zero audience and you're still showing up. You're okay with the three person audience and you're still delivering as if that room had 10,000 people. Andra, I know there's so much more that we can talk about when it comes to the expert blogging blueprint, when it comes to Pinterest, when it comes to SEO. I just want to ask, how can people find you? How can people work with you? So you can find me from my website is andrawilliams.com or you can find me from my social media platforms. They're also under andra.williams. Um, and then you can also work with me um, just piggybacking off of what she said is that I have a, a, um, I, I have a free resource, but I also have a training that teaches women how to build a proper business model for 
scale within their business. And so if you're at that stage of where you're just learning the foundations and you're trying to just get your business out there through visibility, then I have a lot of free resources that you can start to implement within your business right now at a free standpoint and at a very low cost option of like, I think like one is like $10. Um, that you can start to implement to really understand how to really accelerate your business through blogging and through SEO. And then we also have just some, um, I'm releasing my, and just piggybacking off of that too, I'm releasing a group program for visibility for Christian entrepreneurs who are trying to become wildly in demand, who's trying to step out of from the cave that they place themselves in and really understand how to really use their expertise to replenish their market through blogging, through whatever, however the Lord, their spiritual gifts, whatever the Lord placed within them, how to gain visibility to that. Because that's one of the things that I feel like a lot of Christian entrepreneurs struggle with is visibility. If they had the right amount of exposure, their business would be 10 times uh, further than what it is. So that's what I am um, have right now is free resources and a group program for becoming in demand as a Christian entrepreneur. I love that. Summer, as always, thank you. Do I, can I share or like, okay. So Absolutely. Summer, this has been, I know we're over a, a couple minutes, so just bear with us. Um, this journey with you, I'm not going to cry. Um, this journey with you has been so phenomenal because we have reached thousands, tens of, of thousands of individuals through this vision that again, in the beginning, I shared this in our opening, started off with the IG post. And here we are third season in eighth episode, ninth episode, and we're not done. Our work isn't done. However, this is super bittersweet because today is summer's final episode with us. And I'm literally going to try not to cry. Like, I'm just going to get off and then cry later. Um, mm, thank you. That's all I can say right now because I'm literally going to cry in like five seconds. Everything that you have done for seeing the vision, for letting me do my thing and, you know, express my creative genius, it's one thing to have your friends and your family cheer you on, but to have someone who you've established a relationship with to then come alongside you for three years that is an international company, that says something about the work that we're doing here with discover her as I'm snot nosing live on camera, right? Um, I don't take that lightly. I'm so grateful for you and I'm grateful for who's coming next, but it is not going to be the same. It's going to be something else. It's going to be something different. It's gonna still be great, but you Summer have brought a wealth of knowledge to these discussions. Um, and so we are so thankful for you, for your time, right? Because we know that you're busy. We know that there's so much that you're doing. And each episode for three years, y'all, as the VP, you have sat with us over and over again every single month. And so if I had flowers in person, I would give them to you and just thank you um, for, again, allowing me to be free and bring who, you know, God called me to bring onto the stages here with the boot camp. Um, but thank you for being willing to co-sign and say, Comerica, we need to keep doing this. So Summer, I love you and thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Margo. I mean, yeah, we've been doing it for a minute. Like <laughs> we've been doing it for a minute. And that is the power of aligning with the right people, with the right um, mindset. We're completely different industries. I mean, I'm finance, but we're talking about everything that benefits and, and helps so many people. Um, yes, this is, this is my, my last, Comerica Business Bootcamp, but I am still in the Valley. I am, I am still here. I have decided and I'll share. So 
nobody's like, where'd she go? Like, yeah, no, for sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll share that really quick. Um, you know that I've been an entrepreneur and those who have been listening know that I'm an entrepreneur. I have been for several years. Um, I do have other businesses. I have multiple businesses because you always got to figure out which one's going to work, right? Um, praise God that two of them that did work or are working, I should say, um, one being the pet industry business, but I also have a healthcare company. So that healthcare company that focuses on mental health, behavioral health, substance abuse, um, any type of psychosis and um, people who need psych evaluations and counseling and treatment, that is, that's kind of what we do, or that was what I did, I should say, with investing into people like Margot, who then helped the people that I couldn't reach. But now I've been able to reach those people on a more micro level and it, it, same group, you know, same, same group of people, same, same people here, but really the touch, the feel, the seeing the, the transformation and seeing how things are working and coming to a real, real ground level on benefiting the people here um, in Arizona. And the, the wonderful thing is I'm doing it with my, my brothers. Um, you know, we have a nonprofit as well. So it's a, it's, um, we have a, a nonprofit, which is our foundation, which side note, business, last business tip. If you ever have a business, make sure you have a nonprofit and make it a foundation. Okay. Um, if anybody ever wants to donate to you, they have to be able to donate somewhere. They cannot be a for-profit. Um, but okay, off of that. Um, so we have the, the nonprofit that's, for, that's called FEED and the for-profit that's called FEED. It stands for Fallset Empowerment and Economic Development. You understand my brothers are powerhouses in their own right. Um, we all came together, brought our experience, brought our knowledge, and none of us are doctors. I'm going to mention that. None of us are doctors. You don't have to be a doctor to help people. You don't have to be a doctor to own a hospital. You just have to have the heart to do it and hire the right people to help the people that you want to serve. So dream big. Once you reach halfway there, dream bigger. Just keep dreaming because this is something that I didn't see for myself two years ago. We started it two years ago and now it's just flourishing. And it is, it's proof that it works. As long as you do not quit, you'll never fail and continue to do the work that you do because something might fall in your lap. You're like, I didn't think about that, but now that I'm in the space, I kind of like it. I kind of like doing this. So let's go ahead and use my expertise for in this, in this area. So um, this is, it, it's an amazing thing to be here. It's amazing to watch you grow, Margo, and I'm going to keep watching you grow. You have my contact information. You, you have a free, free line to me. I'm in Phoenix. So if I travel, I travel, but I, I'm still here. So yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for this new dream. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you so much, Summer. We're we're so excited. And I definitely wanted to make sure to give you the floor so people can start looking like, okay, where is she? Where is she? What's next? What is she doing? Because it's it, um, we will. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, because again, you you added so much value to these discussions where you saw fit. And and so I think that was that's it's been a really great. And so today was another amazing dynamic segment of the business boot camp and we're just continuing to trudge ahead and I will just give you a little hint some of what's coming down the line with discover her is going to be live in person so just get ready there are some changes that are that are coming down the pipeline um but we're just here to continue to serve to continue to do our part for economic sustainability andra thank you girlfriend for joining me and being here today everyone else for joining live and staying with us for a few extra moments to send summer off well and show her all of our love. Um, thank you. Because again, we know you could have been anywhere else in this world, but you're here with us to learn and grow. So until next time, continue making a transformative impact. Bye for now. See you on the next episode.